The Kentucky Shakers, a Southerner's Interpretation of the Rules. The term Shaker style conjures up images of plain utilitarian objects, austere, orderly living spaces, simple unadorned furniture. After working in the field of Shaker history for over three decades with an emphasis on the furniture of the Shakers, I can unequivocally tell you that um, the interpretation of the word simple is in the eye of the beholder, that the definition of simplicity is a matter of opinion, of custom, of culture, and of taste. The first few members of the Shaker Church came from England to America in 1774 without a material culture created from their belief system. It wasn't until they began to establish villages and to form objects for daily use that what we know as Shaker style came into existence. They settled first in upstate New York and eventually founded a lead colony, New Lebanon, that dictated strict rules for just about anything to be created by Shaker hands. Interpretation of those rules was inevitable, but the close proximity of the 12 villages located in New York and New England ensured that liberties outside the bounds of convention seldom took place. The Shaker lifestyle was a paradox of bold restriction and revolutionary freedom. To belong to the sect, you had to give up your property for the communal cause, be willing to confess your sins openly, and vow to live a celibate life. All the while, the Shakers saw men and women as equals, bestowing governing power to both sexes in both spiritual and temporal roles. The Shakers believed that racial equality, believed in racial equality, and offered a lifestyle that was unavailable to people of color elsewhere. They established living environments that were clean, efficient, and modern for their day. Technology was embraced, easing the drudgery of work. Trades were taught, education was provided, and three meals were served in the large communal dining rooms every day. Because the ultimate goal was to grow closer to God, marriage was considered a hindrance to the process. Shakers knew that not everyone was up to the task, but they sought those who were willing to try. A person's relationship to God was enhanced through work as daily tasks were seen as opportunities to worship. It was in this environment that the Shaker material culture was created. The parameters were tight, but within them the Eastern Shakers produced one of the most recognizable and beautiful genres of furniture in our country's history. Utility, not beauty, was the original goal, but the byproduct of craft from godly motivation possesses an undeniable appeal. On January the 1st, 1805, Shaker missionaries came from the West, eventually establishing four villages in Ohio, one in Indiana, and two in Kentucky. The same rules applied, but what they began to see and to experience was an onslaught of regional customs and traditions carried into the villages like baggage by converts to the Shaker faith, a cultural conflict between the villages in the Northeast and those in the West had been ever present or has been ever present for most of Shaker history. During today's presentation, I will give examples of furniture forms from both Kentucky villages. I have to admit that my talk may a bit, be a bit heavy on South Union. That focus comes from an obvious place since I've been immersed in that research uh, at, at South Union for more than 30 years. But it also stems from the fact that South Union's material culture, when compared to other villages, represents the extreme, what I consider the greatest leap away from the conventions of the Northeastern Shaker rulebook. All the villages were products of their immediate regions, but South Union seems to have straddled the fence between the Shaker rulebook and regional influence with a fondness for creativity, a dash of indifference, and quite often a disregard for restraint. We'll see if you agree with my assertion once you've looked at some of the images. Both Pleasant Hill established in 1805 and South Union in 1807 were in, in, inhabited by Southern converts.
experts. Pleasant Hills primarily from Kentucky, Virginia, and North Carolina. South Union from Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Let's look quickly at architecture. When you look at the architecture of the northeastern Shaker villages, you see buildings that are built of frame construction with weatherboarding, very institutional looking structures. But in the west, here in Kentucky, you see buildings that looked much more like what um, average homes of the day were, were built to look like, except much, much larger for the communal reason. This, the center dwelling at Pleasant Hill. This, the center dwelling at South Union. So there was quite a difference in what was happening in the East and what was happening in the West, or what we like to call the South. The dwelling houses, for instance, were shaped in a T plan, very much like what you see uh, on the landscape here, except the L at the back of the main structure would have been over to one side with a, a breezeway and open porch, but where there is symmetry in Shaker buildings, and that is because of the male and the female equality. Similarly, you see in the uh, uh, church dwelling of the um, uh, Shakers at, at the Pleasant Hill, wooden buildings because there was much wood on the landscape there at South Union there was very little wood and it was on a part of Kentucky called the Barrens where it was a sea of grass so the Shakers made most of their buildings in that community of brick. There was also a great difference in the way that the Eastern Shakers and the Western Shakers looked at food. The um, Shakers who visited South Union, for instance, from the Northeast, one of them in 1873 said the food is very rich and some articles are made to swim in melted butter. They um, equated the food with shingle nails at South Union. They also did not understand some of the customs while dining. They uh, thought it was a total waste for the young, young girls to be fanning flies uh, away uh, from the table with peacock feather fans a southern tradition. They also did not understand why hot bread was continually being brought to the table during the meal experience. Hospitality was, an, was a thing in all Shaker villages and here at, at South Union in, in this 1835 map you see at the top of the photograph a um, unusual looking building. This is a freestanding piazza where Shakers uh, would take their guests of the trustee's office out to enjoy uh, tobacco or liquor after dinner. You see a large fish-shaped um, weather vane on top of that building there. The Shakers did sell products from their trustee's office and at South Union you did find one of the things on sale was whiskey. And it's the only Shaker village that, that produced whiskey, but like all Kentuckians it seemed to be almost a prerequisite. So we have to understand that Southerners talk differently and they worked differently and they dressed differently and as we will see, created furniture differently. The Kentucky villages made furniture for 60 to 70 years and the greatest period of productivity being from 1820 to 1860. Another point to remember is there was very little furniture production in the early days. Small populations and small buildings did not require much furniture, especially when converts were bringing with them household furniture of their own. Much of that furniture never left the village. As populations increased, the size of the dwellings increased, creating a greater need for furniture. For instance, when South Union Center House was completed in 1833, all new bedsteads were made for the 26 retiring rooms, approximately 75 beds. These periods of high productivity are when repetition in scale and construction technique took place. And 
the collections that are housed at Pleasant Hill and South Union today are only small representations of the furniture and other examples of material culture that existed in those villages during the 19th and 20th century. Now that being said, they are the largest collections of Kentucky Shaker furniture and material culture in the world, and the collections are vast, but still only a small representation of what was actually there in the 19th century. Let's look at some of the specific forms that you find in Kentucky. First of all, here's what we see in the Northeast, a bureau that is very, very tall, very symmetrical, very plain, austere. Compare that with what we're finding in Kentucky. Bureaus in the Sheraton style that are up on turned legs, but are much, much larger than you would usually find in an average home. This example from Pleasant Hill, a very similar example that you find from South Union. You see uh, similar leg turnings here, what we term at South Union as an inverted pear-shaped turning. One of the things that we do find at South Union is that the, the carpenter who was in charge of the shop there was not only making furniture, but he was also making all of the interior woodwork and trim for the insides of the building. So we see quite a relationship. His name was Robert Johns, and we are very fortunate to have some of his molding planes in our collection. Here's a great example. You see that same pair turning in the banister uh, um, support here in the center family dwelling. It's just turned upside down. At Pleasant Hill, they employed small, delicate pulls on their bureaus. At South Union, large pulls are much more commonly found in that community. Now, there are other examples, too. There are other examples that are not of the turned foot that may have been uh, produced a little bit earlier, but definitely by a different craftsperson. An Eastern Shaker table in the classic style, this one from Mount Lebanon, New York, very plain, very pared down. Here's the Pleasant Hill interpretation of that simple table, simple work table. What we see is a uh, square post that goes into a simple turned, uh, round turned, bottle turned leg with no transition whatsoever at Pleasant Hill. At South Union, you see something similar, but as is very common, South Union always tends to add a bit more ornamentation. So on the tables we find in that community, there is a transition uh, ornamentation, which is a very simple lamb's tongue where the corners of that square post are cut before it reaches the termination on the round portion of the leg. We see these tables in all shapes and sizes. Occasionally, even more ornamentation is added to this. This is completely unnecessary, and it's completely um, against what the Shakers would have uh, espoused, but they did it at South Union. So you see ring turnings here, and you also see a button foot on the bottom of this table. The whim of the maker. Now, in the 1850s, things got a little bit more out of control. Uh, we, we see um, quite a few tables that are made like this, which are a mimic of what is happening in the outside world. So someone who is traveling, someone who is um, exposed to things outside of the Shaker villages is seeing this pattern, and they employed it at South Union. And again, we see it in a variety of tables, well-documented tables from this period. The silver, silverware table, for instance, in the dining room. You see here, 
even in large work tables, we see that same familiar turning from South Union. Trestle tables are a form in the Shaker community that were employed by all of the villages, all 24 villages in America, because they're so practical for um, large numbers of people getting around them and uh, unobstructed underneath with, with the, the trestle form. That is a Mount Lebanon style. Here's what we see at Pleasant Hill, which is very, very similar. And it's South Union, just a bit different. Um, you see a, a leg um, that you don't see anywhere else in the Shaker world. You also might notice in this photograph that the top of the table has boards that go across the table instead of lengthwise, which is much more common. But it's something that you see over and over in South Union. Bedsteads were supposed to be plain. The Shakers were some of the first people to use uh, wheels or casters on their beds to be able to move those around. Uh, often you find in the northeastern beds, which is what you're seeing here, the slats go the length of the bed uh, to give it a bit more buoyancy than uh, going across the bed, which is much more typical. The same can be found at Pleasant Hill. This is the Pleasant Hill interpretation of Shaker simplicity, and you can't see it here, but those slats do go the length of the bed, uh, a very plain style. But you can um, notice here in, in the photograph that the, the, the headboards uh, do have some variation. So there is a bit of creativity here employed. South Union, um, its early beds looked like this. And um, this is so very um, uh, common in the region. This is not just what you see uh, at South Union, but this looks almost identical to what you find in our outlying region. But at South Union, again, you see this use of lamb's tongue, which seems to be a favorite of, um, of theirs. And again, by the 1850s, just like the tables that we see, the beds were being made with a very similar leg turning. And again, Let's look at a relationship to architecture, the finial on these bedposts are very similar, almost identical to what you see in one of the staircases in the village. Tripod stands were such a useful uh, form of furniture in the 19th, 18th and 19th centuries. Uh, this very austere um, version from Mount Lebanon, New York, one of the classics of Shaker style, is um, is very well known with with with, um, with the Shakers, and it is not at all what you see in Kentucky because the Kentuckians made tripod stands that were like what was being made in the region. This beautiful example from Pleasant Hill, um, and they are so fortunate to have discovered uh, templates for the cabriole legs uh, that uh, they, those still exist in their collection, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. Here is a very similar example found at South Union. And another example from South Union that employs Had more ornamentation that was not at all necessary, but there you can see it an extra turning on that vase. Chairs. The Shaker chair is an icon of simplicity and utility and beauty and still very much revered today uh, by collectors and this wonderful example uh, from the Northeast. Pleasant Hill uh, chairs, the ones that are found here in Kentucky, actually are very similar to what you um, expect to find in the Northeast, but a bit more heavy as far as the uh, stock in the posts. 
The finial at Pleasant Hill is, is plain, simple, no ornamentation at all. And a taper at the foot, which is common in Western shaker chairs, shaker chairs and worldly chairs. South Union's example. You see the finial has a bit more, again, a bit more ornamentation to it. There are two examples actually from South Union that we see. One has a larger finial and one has a much smaller finial. We call this an egg in an egg cup turning and it characterizes South Union chairs. These are also made in children's chairs too. And yes, there were children that Shaker villages because people brought children with them when they joined and the community also adopted children. Pleasant Hill used uh, listing or tape woven seats that um, mimic what was being made in the Northeast. South Union used white oak splint and also this very decorative reed uh, that um, we find in a number of our chairs. The rocking chair form at a Pleasant Hill has a simple turning beneath the arm. The only ornamentation that you see there are some, some nice scribe lines that go right around the, uh, the middle portion of that turning. A South Union example Again, just a bit more going on here. And you do see a, um, a, a mimic of the um, egg, uh, the um, pear, pear shape that is so common in our community. Now, there are some unique forms that you find at South Union. For instance, this is a linen press, which is a wonderful piece. We have about a half a dozen of these in the collection, and they are a small table one drawer table with a press on the top this is two pieces uh, the shakers made presses that could be moved around to a variety of different places like you see here at pleasant hill this press was moved uh, or was being used on top of a bureau not necessarily made for this bureau but used with it or it may have been used at another place at another time here's an example from south union a press from the 1840s uh, atop a counter from about the 1860s. These were definitely not made together, but they know we know that they were used together as we have discovered them in this 1920s photograph of the main hall of one of our buildings. An incredible desk from Pleasant Hill, which is almost indistinguishable from what you would see in the outlying region. But it's one of a kind in Kentucky. The Shaker uh, collections and a desk at South Union, which has a press on top, which was most likely not made at the same time. It's base. Pleasant Hill has some incredibly wonderful uh, workshop pieces that have uh, the original paint intact. These are very, very rare in Kentucky as none of them exist from South Union. South Union made sewing desks like you see here. Uh, two of these have, have survived and they have a large drawer for storage. They have a workspace on top and a workspace beneath the drawer that pulls out. And then on top of the um, workspace is a drawer that opens and will, will be stationary by the use of a little button there that, uh, that reveals all the, the notions and the thread needles and things that you need for sewing. An apothecary case from Pleasant Hill is also one of a kind used in the shop there where probably in the infirmary or the physician's shop uh, in the community and is, is an amazing piece that has survived. And food safes, 
uh, are only found at South Union, uh, this, this beautiful example from the 1830s. Built-in cupboards uh, at Pleasant Hill. This is also unique in the, um, the Shaker West. Pleasant Hill is the only place you find these um, beautiful pieces in this beautiful architecture. And at South Union, the slab or sideboard, or as we call it today, a hunt board. Uh, this is a Southern form and South Union is the only community that, uh, as we know today, as far as we know, constructed one of these to be used. And this was to be um, used in the dining room and it was for liquor bottles. A sugar chest at South Union, another Southern form. And as far as we know this so far, this is the only Shaker sugar chest that is known to exist. It has a very unusual leg turning that for many years I doubted that a shaker manufacturer, but in recent years we did discover this same turning in the staircase in the attic of one of our buildings. So again, the people that were in the shops were making furniture and they were putting these buildings uh, together. They were joining these buildings um, too. And another little uh, wonderful thing from South Union, this is a document box that did not have pulls, but it has only locks on it and has enough space for four large um, bound journals. After the Civil War, things really begin to change in the Shaker communities. Um, uh, as, as mail order became more common, as peop more people were coming and going in the villages, uh, as the populations were, were decreasing, uh, the Shakers began to look more like everybody else. And much of the original Shaker furniture, as it aged, was being taken to the attics for storage. This unusual um, novelty piece was actually bought and used by one of the Shaker women at South Union uh, during this period, and we were able to acquire it back um, just a few years ago. Not something you would expect to find in a Shaker village, nor this, but this has great provenance to, to South Union, and I'm sure someone probably brought this in as a convert, and it was kept and used in the community for many, many years. The Shakers were also making furniture in the later days, and we think they made furniture as late as the 1880s. Uh, this piece at Pleasant Hill, this desk was made um, for one of the uh, community members during this time period. And what great um, documentation here that it was made in 1879, and they even noted who it was made for and by whom it was made. This is very unusual and you hardly ever find this on Shaker furniture. Likewise, a, a desk was made for our elder at South Union probably in the late 1870s and it exists still today. One of the great features of this is a disc on an iron arm that uh, descends back into the piece if it's not being used and it can pivot out when you need light. One of the most interesting things we have found in recent years is color on Shaker furniture. And there are some pieces that do retain their original color, like you see this chrome yellow uh, chair uh, from the 1830s that somehow has retained this beautiful, beautiful paint very well taken care of over the years. And there are other pieces too. Uh, even though this color is undoubtedly faded and would have been much more vibrant uh, and probably had a sheen to it in its um, early days, this wash stand, we still see the red and the blue uh, intention of this piece. A step back cupboard that was again undoubtedly much darker in its earlier time but a nice green color. The corner cupboard that you see in the far distance here in our um, dining room one of our in one of our buildings uh, is walnut and it did not have any paint on it at all. Well 
one of the corner cupboards, uh, even though they're built in, uh, was missing and had been taken out of the dining room in 1922 when the village was getting ready to close. We had a, a, a craftsman make us another corner cupboard uh, to go in that spot, and this is what it looked like. And this is what it looked like once we had the paint analyzed. Um, this is the way we've discovered the colors at South Union. Susan Buck, who lives in Colonial Williamsburg, has done paint analysis for us, and we were able to take a sample from one of the original corner cupboards and discovered this orange color and recreated the paint on this using ground pigments and linseed oil. The linseed oil paint has, has been consistent in every sample that we have taken from South Union, either on interior woodwork or on freestanding furniture. Another piece that's been restored was this desk, which had been uh, stripped and polyurethaned in the 1970s. Its base was missing. We had it restored and lo and behold, found out that the uh, original color was this chrome yellow. And this is what it looks like today with a reproduction base and its color back intact. So it's, it's an impression that people don't get uh, so often because we love to see the walnut and love to see the cherry, but the Shakers were definitely painting furniture in the early days. This beautiful uh, clock, which looks to be a tall case clock, but is actually what was termed a dwarf case clock. And you can see it here uh, next to its um, brethren and sisters here. Um, and it is much, much shorter than the rest. It was made by Benjamin Young's, the, the works were in, in New England in the 18 teens and sent to South Union. And this beautiful Southern style case was made at South Union in the community. Well, recently we also had this uh, clock analyzed. And even though it looks like this today, this is probably what it looked like when the Shakers knew it in the 1830s when that case was new. But have no fear, we are not going to paint this beautiful cherry clock. I can't bear to do that. But we find beautiful color in interior spaces like this um, ultramarine color on the, in the dairy along with these dark red baseboards. and blue shutters in the grain barn. Chrome yellows and reds in the center family dwelling. And even a chrome yellow floor in our 1846 ministry shop. So what happened to the Kentucky Shakers? Pleasant Hill closed in, eight, in 1910 and has been restored as one of the nation's preeminent historic sites in the 1960s. South Union's closing, Pleasant Hill here, South Union's closing was in 1922 and was crowned by an auction that drew over 4,000 people to an event where everything from livestock to farm equipment to Shaker furniture was sold. The 4,000 remaining acres were divided into 50 farms and one man bought the large tract that included 50 of the original buildings. Within eight years, he destroyed all of, but nine of those buildings. And thankfully those nine are there at our historic site today and obviously very valuable to us. So after this brief glimpse into the body of work by Kentucky Shaker Craftsman, it's probably easy to see that the concept of simplicity is something to be interpreted. Now, the Eastern Shakers who were making the rules did not just suggest simplicity for plainness sake, but it was an important part of both the tangible and the intangible in a Shaker's life. You see here in the Holy Laws of Zion, whatever is fashioned, let it be plain and simple and of good and substantial quality, which becomes your calling and profession, unembellished by any superfluities, which add nothing to its goodness or durability. Labor until ye bring your spirits to feel satisfied and thankful for that degree of modest plainness 
in all that you possess. And the millennial laws in 1821 very boldly says beatings, moldings, and cornices, which are merely for fancy, may not be made by the believers. But beatings and moldings And cornices are the very features that help to identify Kentucky Shaker craftsmanship at Pleasant Hill and especially at South Union. Kentucky Shaker furniture stands apart as a distinctive subset of the whole and is proof of the strength of regional traditions and customs we are left with a beautiful reminder of spiritual dedication and its undeniable effect on craftsmanship. There is nothing more pleasing than to see these objects in context, placed on the wooden floors they were meant for, against the whitewashed walls that originally framed them. And flooded with sunlight through the same windows that lit them in the 19th century. Brother, Brother Arnold Had of Sabbath Day Lake, Maine, one of the Shakers that is in a still active Shaker community there today, said recently, there is no such thing as Shaker style, no Shaker aesthetic. His statement speaks to the long history and ever-evolving material culture of the Shakers, but it also verifies the disparity of design in relationship to regional preferences. The Kentucky Shakers creative offering is proof.